So I, I always say to patients that um, uh, on the day of your operation, uh, the single most important person uh, is the anaesthetist, because they're the person keeping you uh, steady, all your parameters, uh, and basically, if I can be blunt, they're keeping you alive uh, while we do what we need to do as surgeons. For the rest of your life, it may be that the surgeon was slightly more important. But on the day, it is absolutely clear to my mind, and uh, recently having had an operation myself under general anaesthetic, I can say that it is really good to have a fabulous anaesthetist. And we're really <laughs> lucky. <laughs> we're really lucky, uh, and, and I'm particularly lucky because uh, Dr. Sharma. Uh, normally works on a Tuesday when I operate. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Sasha. Words of praise. Good morning, everybody. Um, so f first of all, because there's a brief time for this talk, we'll just leap into what anesthesia comprises of. So in simple words, it's a triad of analgesia, that is pain relief, hypnosis, that is controlled unconsciousness, and thirdly, echinesia, which means making one immobile. And these all things are done as a part of anesthesia to facilitate a surgery. So we don't just offer anesthetic or anesthesia to anybody without having an objective to facilitate the surgery safely. So um, moving on. You may the, the the people who have had aneurysm repair done in the past may have seen an anesthetist on the day of surgery, but our involvement comprises of right from the pre-op assessment time, where you may not have physically seen the anesthetist who will be your anesthetist on the day, but you would have seen nurse practitioners who will pre-assess you. You would have seen the surgeons. There may have been a consultant anesthetist who sees you. And the objective of the pre-operative assessment is to assess if you have any other medical conditions, how fit you are, how is your general health, to also find if we have to do any specific investigations more relevant to your cardiac conditions, if you have any, as well as how is your respiratory system. And the objective of assessing all this is to make the journey smoother and safer so that we can prepare you and optimize your health to face this major surgery, which could either be an open repair of aneurysm or endovascular, which we do through the groin, done as a radiological procedure. So when I say optimizing your general health is once we've assessed specific investigations like all your blood results, we've taken history about your normal medications, history of allergies, if you've had any other surgeries, have there been any complications specific to anesthetics, or in family, there are certain co problems that run in family and which can affect anesthesia. We'll clear that, if that is the case, we'll be prepared for that. And optimizing general health. If we know that you have raised blood pressure and it is not controlled, we can make sure that you're on antihypertensives. Uh, aspirin is very good, blood thinning agent, which is, again, we have to make sure all our patients are on aspirin for this surgery. And as well as other advice of general well-being, like ceasing smoking, as well as um, exercising in moderation, which one can undertake within limits. So all this is to reduce the, sur the risk during surgery and also make you better prepared to face anesthesia and the surgery and encourage your well-being and also to facilitate a quicker recovery from this major procedure. So what happens on the day of surgery? Um, having <coughs> undergone preoperative assessment, depending on how much time was there before uh, actually detecting the aneurysm and coming to the hospital, because some people may not undergo a full preoperative assessment. Uh, if the aneurysm is larger in size, you may be admitted and then within a day or two, you may have your surgery. So those individuals may not have the full preoperative assessment as an outpatient, but that's done within the hospital. So on the day of surgery, you will meet the said anesthetist who will be your anesthetist on the day. And again, we'll ask you the same questions which would be asked in preoperative assessment. And we will discuss the anesthesia with you, which will comprise of 
pain relief, either an epidural or a spinal anesthetics, depending on whether you're having an open surgery or uh, uh, we call that through the groin, the endovascular surgery. So we'll discuss in details as well as we'll discuss about monitoring <coughs> the, the lines that we place called central ca venous a catheter in your neck, in a large neck vein, and we'll have ECG monitoring. We'll be continuously keeping an eye on you. We'll give you specific antibiotics. We'll also make sure you're nice and warm during the surgery. And also, you'll get an opportunity to ask us there and then if you have any questions pertaining to anesthesia and your recovery. So once we have addressed all that, we make sure that there is a high dependency unit bed available or intensive care unit bed, depending on how well is your general health. And then we schedule for the surgery. So at this point, after the immediate pre-assessment pre on the day of surgery, you will be given an opportunity to ask questions to the anesthetist if you have any. So following on, this is where it happens. This is an anesthetic room. Although this is not the John Ratcliffe Hospital, it's from the Churchill, but it's exactly the same. So you can see this is our anesthetic machine here. We deliver oxygen and all the gases through this. This is the trolley for the patient, and all our medications are safe airway trolley. So this is all, all routine and safe environment to deliver anesthesia. Um, moving on to the actual anesthetics. So depending on whether you're going to have an open repair, that is a cut in the abdomen for the aneurysm repair, or having a radiological procedure which is endovascular, the anesthetics will change. So for endovascular repair, you, you, may have, you may have a general anesthesia or alternative is just under a spinal injection in your back. So that is perfectly sound. And there is a third technique under local anesthetics. If, if the groin uh, inject, injection that the radiologist gave is, is a sh very, very small injection rather than the actual cuts in the groin, then it's perfectly f sound to carry on under local anesthetics with some sedation. It's similar to having an angiogram or uh, you know, investigations through the groin. So it's not as painful. So these are the various form of anesthetic techniques that we can do. So if we consider having general anesthetics for uh, open aortic aneurysm repair surgery, so first of all, we will we'll get you re relaxed and well seated in the anesthetic room, and then we'll place the epidural have some routine monitors set up on you. And the reason why we place the epidural or the spinal injection before we give general anesthesia is it's safer than whilst you all are awake rather than after general anesthetics. And that is the standard practice in UK. You can imagine a needle going through this close to the spinal cord is better done when the patients are awake than, rather than asleep. So once we've placed the epidural or the spinal injection, the next step will be general anesthesia for an open abdominal aneurysm surgery, which will comprise of, again, you will already have had the drip in the back of your hand. We'll give you medicine through the drip that will drift you off to sleep. And then as we drift you off to sleep, we'll hold an oxygen mask over your face, keep you well oxygenated, at the same time, we continuously monitor your heartbeat, blood pressure, oxygen saturation, and there'll be an anesthetic nurse helping us uh, facilitate the anesthesia. So once we have, once you're asleep with a breathing tube in your windpipe, you will not know this is happening. You'll be sound asleep before we place the breathing tube in your windpipe. We'll help you breathe. You will be under general anesthetics, and breathing will be supported. We'll place. A, a, a central line in your neck using an ultrasound monitor, so it's all under full control, as well as we'll place another drip in your artery, which gives a continuous trace of blood pressure. So any fluctuation in blood pressure, we have to keep an eye on that, because the last thing we want with an, for an aneurysm is to have very high or very low blood pressure. So uh, apart from that, we also place a catheter in your bladder and warming blanket in the anesthetic room. So obviously, when one is asleep, you can't look after yourself. So we will look after you whilst you're asleep. So moving on, this is how the epidural 
uh, after it is placed looks the injection comes out then there's no needle it's only a fine plastic tube and there'll be a dressing on it to keep it safe it's perfectly fine to lie on your back and this is the central line and these are all our monitors so we monitor your heartbeat this is the oxygen saturation this is the continuous arterial trace this is your breathing pattern Okay, so what happens during surgery? Again, anesthesia is maintained throughout the duration of surgery. At the same time, despite the fact that you, one is unconscious for the duration of surgery, we do give pain relief preemptively. It is continuously going on and we look after the ventilation and blood pressure control as well as we give you intravenous fluids and in Oxford, and that is also from our national studies have shown for all elective open aortic aneurysm repair surgery, we use cell salvage technique where you'll hear more about it in the afternoon, where we, the blood that is coming out from the surgical wound goes into a cell salvage uh, device and it's spun round, filtered and we give it back to you. So our rates are 0% transfusion from outside. So it's all your blood that goes in for all elective open aneurysm surgery. Okay, so moving on, the most crucial step <coughs> in open aortic aneurysm repair is the clamping of the aneurysm, the aorta to repair the aneurysm. So that is a major anesthetic challenge. Obviously it's challenging for the surgeons as well, but it does pose a lot of challenge to anesthetics. So why is it? You can imagine a pipe connected to the tap. Sorry, I'm using very simple words here. A pipe connected to the uh, tap, and you've turned the tap on, and you're going to apply a clamp on the pipe with that running water. So you can imagine the pressure within the pipe before the clamp, that will be really high. So it's exactly the same what would happen when they clamp the aneurysm to repair. So all that pressure is transmitted to the heart. Now, if obviously we have access to your heart, but if one has heart failure or any other cardiac conditions, we have to be careful when this step takes place. So we have to make sure we make it as smooth and as tolerable, as safe for your heart when they apply the clamp. So preemptively we'll adjust our anesthetics for the heart to uh, you know, withstand that stress. So once the clamps are applied, we give all, we call that all good medications which, which maintain your normal uh, heartbeat and normal contractility of the heart and strength of the heart. And also during this time, we prepare your body to combat the effect of reperfusion. What is reperfusion? When they release the clamp, what happens then? So you can imagine when they apply the clamp on the aorta to repair the aneurysm, the blood supply to the parts, to certain parts below the clamp, is not as normal. Okay? So when they release the clamp, once they fix, you'll get a gush of metabolites okay, coming back because they were not getting normal blood supply. So that again has impact on the heart. So we have to prepare your heart to face all that. So we give certain medications that will reduce the effect of that. And having a good surgeon, I can praise Ashok there and our surgical team. So we do uh, something that we call, we have a continuous communication. Although they can keep a close eye, we keep a close eye on you, on them. They, they release the clamp slowly so that the, the metabolites they are released very slowly into the circulation. So we have time, or your heart has time, to catch up with that. So uh, when I say slowly, it is fraction of seconds. We're not talking about minutes and hours, fraction of seconds. So once this is all done, and we know your blood pressure, heartbeat, and all breathing, and oxygenation, everything returns to normalcy, we start preparing for you to emerge from the anesthesia. That is again another major step. So what is my objective once the surgery is finished? It's to make sure you all wake up comfortably with good pain relief, you all are warm, no sickness, and breathing well immediately after surgery. So every duration of surgery is three to five hours. Again, it depends on the complexity of the aneurysm and uh, uh, how things proceed in trop. So the duration that you all, are, uh, one will be asleep for this surgery is exactly the duration of surgery. So no longer than that, unless there are some problems <coughs> due to which we have to um, <coughs> ventilate and keep you asleep on intensive care unit so that we can catch up 
and we can improve the factors which have delayed your waking up. So that's all done. So in the post-operative period, you'll go on the intensive care unit, uh, uh, which, is in the, which is in Oxford, or high dependency unit, where you'll be breathing on your own, hopefully comfortable, and uh, we do encourage sips of water after, uh, maybe if you've had your surgery by three o'clock, you're on intensive care unit, we could encourage sips of water, which is clear water, no fish and chips, as Ashok says. <laughs> and the next day, the idea is for you all to go back to normalcy of the vascular ward, and the epidural will stay in for a couple of days after the surgery to give pain relief. At the same time, we have a good team of physio and the nurses on the ward they, 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 who will encourage you to breathe and the breathing exercises, and you'll be closely monitored by the pain team uh, with regards to the epidural, because despite the fact that it is a major undertaking, the epidural, but 10 to 15 percent of them don't work as we, w as well as we want them to. But there are alternative form of pain relief techniques that are well known and we can use. So um, that is it. Any questions? Mm -hmm.